Low-cost lunar landers are really the key, I think, to a, a successful private sector development of the moon. And, and low cost, of course, is in, in the eye of the beholder. I mean, uh, obviously, if you ask uh, you know, people at the Defense Department, it's a different number than you get if you ask uh, you know, somebody that runs an uh, uh, automobile shop down the road. But I, I think the, uh, the, the answer to that can be really quite low, and, and I'm, I'll cite a couple things that are going on that are very exciting. Uh, we've been working at uh, NASA Ames with uh, some colleagues at the University of Stuttgart in Germany, and they have a uh, low-cost lunar orbiter that's, uh, that's only going to cost a few million euros. Now they use uh, sort of student uh, labor and, uh, and uh, they get a lot of parts for free. Uh, I think the, the mission is called Baden-Württemberg-1. I'm also told that uh, they sold it by saying that uh, there was going to be a land rush on the moon and, and Germany wanted to get its share. So I'm, I'm not sure we should encourage that kind of thinking. But nonetheless, they're making very, very good progress. So, and that's a, a lunar orbiter. Uh, I'm also very excited about what I call nanosatellites. These are things that weigh a few kilograms. Uh, and I don't see any reason that we can't land a, uh, a five kilogram mission on the lunar surface that uh, would have uh, up to a kilogram of useful payload. Uh, those things could be uh, only uh, a few million dollars uh, per mission. So uh, the, really the, uh, the sky's the limit, or you might say the, the, the basement's the limit. I think we can get very, very affordable things uh, on the moon uh, and in lunar orbit. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite optimistic about low cost and what we could do in the next few years. It's important to keep in mind the, uh, the initial uh, set of requirements and purposes of the vision for space exploration. Key to to that uh, vision being sustainable is uh, opportunity, innovation, and private sector development. That having been said, uh, very early on, I think we're going to need to see from, from lunar exploration uh, some real private sector uh, investments and also private sector returns. Uh, clearly, some of the early ones could be uh, uh, scientific. Uh, I'm quite excited about the possibilities of putting observatories on the moon, r reminding uh, everyone that that most observatories on the Earth are funded by uh, private sectors uh, and private individuals that, uh, that are interested in science but want to leave a legacy. So I think we might see quite early on scientific uh, uh, establishments on the moon that would be funded by private sector uh, individuals. Uh, again, I think it's uh, affordability is a key uh, factor here, but I believe we could be able to do some interesting science that would leave a real legacy for an individual for a few million dollars. Uh, of course, other developments that uh, private sector, I'm quite convinced that, that uh, basic utilities, the first one being communications and navigation, could be a uh, privately sector development, uh, very similar to what we're trying to do with the COTS development for space launch. Uh, and I would hope that in the future that, uh, that we would, as we start defining our requirements, that we would look to the private sector to provide those as a uh, uh, fee for service. Uh, once that's, that's done, they would provide not only NASA uh, those services, but others that go to the moon as well, including complete private sector missions. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, probably scientific missions.